The top 10 mistakes people make while walking their dogs. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to MNR TV and hit the bell so you never miss any upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Are you about to take your dog for a WALK? We're sure your energetic pup perks up at the mirror sound of your keys or your jacket zipping, just hoping that you're about to unveil the leash and not whisk them away to the VET. Well, if you are about to walk your dog, there are some dog walking faux pas to avoid. For your dog to have the best day ever, make sure you avoid these common dog walking mistakes. Dogs are pretty intuitive, so if you're aching to get home, we get it. You've got to catch the new episode of Real Housewives New York City. Donut might notice. Walking your pooch is about more than just exercise. It's also about stimulation and their senses need it. The smells, the sights, the sounds. And did we mention the smells? New scents are stimulating for your pup, who likely spends a lot of time in the house. It's important to be patient while your dog carefully sniffs their surroundings as it helps them orient themselves identify others, find food, and even detect danger. Not only does sniffing help dogs adjust to their environment, but it relaxes them. So if your pupper is sniffing garbage, don't yank on the leash. Give them a moment to appreciate the aroma of trash. Your mind might wander at times. Hmm, should I order in Thai food tonight? Or perhaps you suddenly had the urge to check your Twitter feed. While your dog likely noticed, Taking Champ out for regular walks can get wearisome, but to him it's exciting every time. Use this time together wisely. Connecting with your pet as well as praising them when appropriate is important. Staying alert is also vital because you're not just responsible for your own safety, but also that of your dogs. Look out for speeding cars and roaming animals that could provoke your dog, like cats and raccoons and keep a tight grip on the leash. You never know when Champ is going to bolt. For the most part, dogs love meeting other dogs, especially if they live in a one-dog household. It's like meeting a potential BFF, but owners often discourage their dogs from approaching canine peers, holding the leash taut, which limits them from stimulating interactions. It's okay to let your pup sniff another pup's butt. Just make sure it's okay with their owner. And it's not just mentally stimulating for your dog to meet other four-legged friends, but other people as well. If strangers are willing, allow your dog to approach unfamiliar people, who will likely give them good pets. The more your dog socializes with others outside their home, the better they'll get at interacting with new people and dogs on a bigger scale. After 45 minutes of hardcore aerobics, you're likely sweating, desperate for air, and drinking water like a madman. Well, what if someone forcibly had you doing jumping jacks for another 15 minutes? Doesn't sound fun. Your dog may feel that way if you push a walk for too long. Be aware of your dog's behavior, frequently checking for signs of physical distress, like yawning, forgetting commands, decrease in pace, and lying down mid-walk. If the weather is particularly hot or cold, it may be a good day for a short, quick walk. On blazing hot days, make sure to bring water for your pooch, and on chilly days, you can dress your dog in a jacket, which gets bonus points for being adorable. And if you're unsure about how much physical exercise your pup can take, talking to your vet will clear things up. You have to know who's boss around here, and spoiler alert, it's not your dog. If your four-legged good boy has a nasty habit of pulling on his leash, as if he's in charge of the route, it might be time to work on those behaviors, especially if he's a large boy. You don't want your enormous Irish wolfhound dislocating your shoulder. Though untraining leash pulling behaviors isn't easy, as muscle memory tells dogs tension around their neck is positive, it is definitely possible. Reward your dog with treats for walking by your side without yanking the leash, and they'll eventually get the hint. If your dog continues walking ahead and pulling the leash, try halting the walk entirely. It'll let your pooch know that pulling will get them nowhere. You may be thinking, what equipment? 
but there's more than meets the eye when it comes to leashes and collars, especially considering the options available. Just remember, comfort and safety are the two most important components of good walking equipment. A too short leash doesn't allow your dog to get anywhere without tugging, and a too long leash makes it difficult for you to maintain control. Retractable leashes aren't always the answer either. Because retractable leashes have such thin, flimsy cords, they can snap easily and can even cause rope burns or gashes. In addition, the locking apparatus on these leashes have been known to break. You're better off with a six-foot leash paired with a flat, buckled collar. Choke collars are a no-no. If your dog hates collars, a harness is a nice alternative. As Jennifer Chatfield, DVM, a veterinarian at Emergency Vet 24-7, told Better Homes and Gardens, many pet owners fail to recognize that taking their pet for a walk without up-to-date vaccinations, dewormers, and heartworm prevention is like taking an infant to the local grocery store and letting anyone and everyone kiss, hug, and hold them. There are so many hazards. Other animals as well as grimy outdoor elements like puddles carry diseases and parasites that can easily target your sweet hound. All of these risks are readily mitigated by keeping your pet up to date on routine vaccinations and other preventative medications based on your pet's lifestyle and your veterinarian's recommendations," Jennifer Chatfield continued. Just because you love seeing your mangy mutt roam the earth without a leash, that doesn't mean the rest of the world is comfortable with it. Even if your excited pooch is uber-friendly, they could easily frighten young kiddos and skittish people. Not only that, but in certain areas, this could earn you a hefty fine. More importantly, leash-free walks could cause your canine friend to get hurt. What if they walked onto a busy road or approached an aggressive, unsocialized dog? Animals are unpredictable in general, so without a leash, there's always the risk of your dog simply running away and getting lost. Look, a squirrel! Stick to dog parks. Let's face it, you didn't really forget the dog poop bags. Dogs can't clean up after themselves, and you don't want to be someone who contributes to the idea that dogs shouldn't be allowed in public spaces. Plus, if someone steps in it, do you really want to pay to replace someone's Christian Louis Vuitton pumps? Aside from that, cleaning up dog waste during walks helps prevent pungent scents from polluting the air, and intestinal diseases such as giardiasis and cryptosporidiosis from spreading. It's your duty as a dog owner to pick up Dookie. Okay, okay, we promise we're not backpedaling. It's a delicate balance. You want your dog to know you're in charge, but you don't want to be a nurse ratchet. Leash walks are supposed to be fun and thrilling for your mutt. No limiting and reprimanding. Let them explore and sniff without being scolded. Your dog should be able to move around freely, discover new things about the neighborhood, and leave their mark where they find it. It's a walk, not an obedience training course. Excessive scolding, especially when not necessary, stresses dogs out and can even reinforce bad behavior. Maybe you deserve the rebuke. 